What's up everybody? Today we're going to talk about recirculating combustion. We're going to read this line specifically here. Recirculating hot gases provides a continuous source of ignition for flame stability. Now, in the past, many people have commented on my elbow burner and have asked why I don't just use a straight pipe. And I have discovered yesterday why the elbow burner works and why a straight pipe does not. And in this video, we're going to look at some footage that shows a recirculating wall of fire that takes place right here. You'll see a little rolling ball of fire in here and a little firewall will form right off the edge of this plate. The gases come down from the jet and then swirl up in this direction. And they come and they fly directly off this plate and then the incoming air pulls that wall of fire over in almost a perfect curve. You can see it. It's amazing. But that is why this thing runs as stable as it does once it gets up and running. It's because it has a continuous recirculation of combustion, which is constantly igniting the flame. The straight tube that was the same size as this that I tried would just blow the flame right out the tube. The um, Bernoulli's principle was causing too much airflow and it had no flame holder in the tube so the flame would just be blown straight out. But because this elbow causes a recirculation event at the throat, it enables a very stable flame. It's continuously reigniting gases or vaporized oil. And I'm going to show you a little illustration here of what we have. If I could find a marker. But basically this is what is happening. You will see a little rolling ball of fire like this. And it's cylindrical. And it goes about the throat of the burner. You'll see it right here. You'll see this like feathered rolling ball of fire and then right here there's just void there's no flame at all it's just air coming in so this swirling rolling ball of fire is continuously igniting the combustor it's not going anywhere this is a geometrically induced flame holder it's causing an eddy current inside this burner it swirls in this direction the air comes in hits molecules in this region and causes them to swirl. And that's what happens right there. And that is a recirculation effect that um, is sought after in many applications. Uh, I have some others here. I've been researching these uh, industrial nozzles and I wanted to show you one in particular that we're gonna be trying out because we should be able to do it. There's this one here which uh, the air comes in and it causes that uh, flame holder swirl right here. You'll get that rolling fireball. It was a better diagram than this. This one here is a very good diagram. The flame comes in this way and then is swept back up into the burner and shoots back into the system, causing a continuous burn. This is actually uh, very old design back when waste oil burners were used to heat homes, so it's tried and true. We know the recirculation process is very effective. Um, man, I can't find the diagram that I'm looking for here that it just show, so clearly showed, or showed it. But at any rate, this is basically what they're showing. They're showing an annular cowling inside the combustor that as gases are drawn in, Look at that mark is dead. As gases are drawn in, there's a certain region that gets swept in and causes a rotation of gases in this direction. So you get like this billing fireball here and the gases roll like this. And that rolling fireball is said to act as a flame holder to keep the flame from just blowing out the tube. And another thing I wanted to point out, a YouTuber by the name of, uh, what was her name? Delicious De Blair had mentioned downstream tapering, which was a, a fantastic idea. She left some other comments that I can't find. They're on another, I have so many videos going right now, I'm just lost. 
But um, she left some great comments. She's the one that told me that this is actually called Bernili's Principle and not the Ventura Effect. I was corrected in that and I am very thankful for comments like this. These uh, comments help out so much. So another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take her advice because she obviously knows what she's talking about is downstream tapering. And I believe what she means is we're gonna make a conical shape, not much, not a whole lot, just a slight taper hole there. I'm trying to draw on camera here and this is just not working out. Something like that, I totally botched that. Let me draw without looking at you on the camera maybe and we'll see what happens here. Something like that. And you, a lot of you have probably seen burners with this shape. I'm positive that's what she's talking about. I could be wrong, but at any rate, I was thinking of taking a piece of this pipe here, cutting a small piece of it off, and then throwing it in the lathe here, and seeing if maybe I can get it hot and just ram this deck into it, or maybe just kind of press something into it, a hammer or something, and taper that thing off a little bit. Induce a taper. The only way I could think of to do it so I think we'll be giving that a try because you need the downstream tapering to help induce this draft effect if you if you don't have the downstream tapering it's probably all just gonna be ejected from Bernili's principle and because uh, basically these things are an ejector look up ejector uh, and then click images and you'll know what an ejector is it's a type of pump that's how these things pump so much air even though we're injecting air into it, the device is actually pumping probably 10 times the air that's coming out of that nozzle because of the ejector Bernili's principle. But uh, at any rate, just wanted to um, shed some light on that because a couple of us have discussed why does the elbow burner work? What is the mystic quality of this burner that makes it essential that that 90 degree angle be put on there? If you don't have a 90, you ain't getting a flame. I walked around with this nozzle in my garage and just started inserting it into different um, combustors. Man, I'm trying not to get... Uh... <laughs> it's kind of hard to talk about certain things sometimes in life, isn't it? Inserting things in holes is not the, the, the phrase I'm looking for. So I basically just tried to get any piece of pipe I could find to turn into a combustor. I used long pipes like this. I used oxygen tanks that have been cut up. I've used uh, three foot pieces of pipe, two foot pieces of pipe, and nothing worked. The only thing that worked was I figured oh, I'll just give this elbow a try, which was initially about this long. I threw that thing inside of one of these uh, rotors just to hold it in place. Stuck the nozzle in there, lo and behold, the damn thing nearly instantly lit up. So, that's it. That is the mystic quality of this burner. It's the rolling fireball that's induced. Now, when you remove this plate, you still kind of get that rolling fireball, but it's allowed to fly up out of the device a little bit. And then you get this pulse jet effect. I don't want it to run like a pulse jet because it's so much louder. It's about another 10 decibels louder. We're already pushing over 100 decibels. So 110 is like severe hearing damage. Um, 100 decibels, will, this thing will damage your hearing. Long story short, under no circumstances should you operate this device without hearing protection. A lot of people disregard that. I don't think I've heard a single person touch on that concept, but um, I work in a lot of power plants and um, industrial plants. I'm a carpenter, do a lot of scaffolding and stuff like that, and uh, you'll see signs all over the place. Uh, severe hearing damage after 1.5 hours exposure, um, 90 decibels, this and that. I also uh, often use the decibel, me decibel meter on my phone in those locations. And uh, 100 decibels is hearing damage, 110 is severe hearing damage in a very short amount of time. And this plate stabilizes the flame and makes it quieter. But uh, there you have it. I just thought I'd share that with you of why this thing works. Hopefully the gentleman that discussed this with me, there were several of you, uh, 
stumbles on this video because uh, it's kind of interesting. I figured it out. And analyzing video footage during editing is what prompted this video because I suddenly realized there is a rolling wall of fire in that elbow, which is reigniting the gases. And it came to me because of a uh, previous observation of this quote. Recirculating hot gases provide a continuous source of ignition for flame stability. So, there you have it, fellas. We're definitely going to be trying this next build. I'm going to try to get the, a taper on this pipe somehow. And then we're going to try these different cowlings. These annular uh, recirculation cowlings. I'm thinking maybe going about that short, cut this in half. Maybe make this one about this long. And, uh... Just take some screws and do a 60 degree angle tri mount and see if we can get this bad boy to burn. I'm thinking I want this burner to be about this long going this direction here. Cut off about six inches because you don't want the combustor to be too big. If you do that, all your flames being wasted in the barrel. Um, this is going to be built for a forge. I had this crazy idea to build a forge by digging a hole in the ground and simply blasting fire into the hole and using the dirt as a refractory. And I got this idea because I, I exterminated some moles one time using um, a massive waste oil burner, like a 200,000 watt waste oil burner, and it got the ground red hot. The ground was like glowing with a bright red color. So it made me think, man, that's kicking off a lot of infrared radiation, which is uh, one of the uh, requirements of a good forge. You want that, that refractory bouncing that radiation off the object you're heating. So it might work, but uh, I'm gonna stop babbling now. Just wanted to show you guys that discovery.